In this video, I want to focus on some different integration techniques that you'll learn in Calculus 2. So let's say if we wish to integrate this function, x sine x dx, how can we do so? For a situation like this, notice that you have two different types of functions being multiplied by each other. A linear function, x, and a trigonometric function, sine x. When you see two different components being multiplied like this, you could use something called integration by parts. And the formula goes like this. The integration of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So we'll need to know what u and what dv is. What we're going to do is we're going to make u equal to x. So that means that du is going to be the derivative of x, which is 1, times dx, or simply dx. Now, dv is going to be sine x with the dx as well. So if we integrate both sides, the integral of dv will give us v, and the integral of sine is negative cosine x. Now that we have this, we can use the right side of this equation. So let's go ahead and plug in everything. So the integral of x sine x dx is going to be u times v. So we know u is x, v is negative cosine x. So that's going to be negative x cosine x, and then minus the integral of v du. So v is still negative cosine x, and du is equal to dx. So at this point, we no longer need this information. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And let's simplify the expression that we now have. So we have two negative signs, which we can make that a positive sign. And the antiderivative of cosine x we know it's sine x. And of course, any time you have an indefinite integral, you need to include the constant of integration, plus c. So this is the answer. It's negative x cosine x plus sine x plus c. And that's it. Now let's try another example using integration by parts. Find the antiderivative of the natural log of x times dx. Feel free to pause the video if you want to give this problem a shot. Go ahead and try it. Now, we need to determine what we're going to make u and dv equal to. So keep in mind the formula is the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So there's two parts here. We have dx and ln x. So what should we do? in this case. Now to find the integral of ln x is what we're trying to do, so it makes no sense to set dv equal to ln x. Instead, we need to make u equal to ln x, and dv has to be equal to dx. Now we need to find du. The derivative of ln x is going to be 1 over x times dx. I know this kind of looked like a v, but let me just redraw that as a u. Now, v is going to be the integral of dx. So if dv is dx, v has to be equal to x. Now, let's apply the formula that we have here. So the integral of ln x dx is going to be u times v. And so we can see that u is ln x, v is x. So u times v is going to be x ln x, and then minus the integral of v, which is x, times du, and du is 1 over x dx. So let's get rid of that. And now let's simplify the expression that we currently have. So x times 1 over x is 1. The x variables will cancel. So we have the integral of 1 times dx, or simply dx. 
the integral of dx is x. And don't forget to add plus c. So this is the answer right here. The integral of ln x is x ln x minus x plus c. Now the next topic we're going to go over is trigonometric integrals. So how can we find the integral of cosine cube x dx? Go ahead and take a minute on that one. What do you think we need to do? So basically, we need to do u substitution, but we need to adjust the problem that we have. For instance, cosine cubed, we can write that as cosine squared times cosine. Now, if you recall one of the Pythagorean identities for trigonometry is this one, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And so if you solve for cosine squared by moving sine squared to the other side, you'll find that cosine squared can be replaced with 1 minus sine squared. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to replace cosine squared with that. So we're going to have 1 minus sine squared times cosine. And now, in this form, we could use u substitution. So let's make the u variable equal to sine x. If we do so, du is going to be the derivative of sine, which is cosine x times dx. So now let's replace sine with the u variable, and let's replace cosine x dx with du. And now we can integrate this. This is supposed to be uh, u squared. So the antiderivative of 1 du is u, and the antiderivative of u squared is u to the third over 3 using the power rule. Now the last thing we need to do is replace the u variable. So the final answer, let's see if I can fit it here somewhere. Maybe I'll just have to get rid of this. The final answer is going to be sine x minus 1 third sine cube x plus c. And that's it. That's all you need to do in this problem. Now, here's another problem. Let's find the integral of cosine to the fifth power times sine to the fourth power. So it's somewhat similar to the last problem, but it's a little bit longer. Feel free to try it if you want to. Now, notice that the trig function cosine on the left is raised to an odd power and the sine function is raised to an even power. We want to focus on cosine because it's raised to an odd power. We can split it into two components, one that's odd and one that's even. So cosine to the fifth power, what we want to do is break it up into cosine x times cosine to the fourth power. The even portion, we can convert it into sine. And so that's going to help us when we use u substitution. Now the first thing we're going to do is replace cosine to the fourth with cosine squared raised to the second power because 2 times 2 is 4. And now, just like before, we can replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. Now we're ready to use u substitution. So just like before, we're going to make u equal to sine x, and du is going to be cosine x dx. So everywhere we see a sine function, let's replace it with the u variable. So this is going to be 1 minus u squared raised to the second power times u to the fourth, and then cosine x times dx all of that we can replace with du. So now at this point, what we need to do is FOIL this expression. So let's multiply 1 minus u squared by itself before we distribute 
the u to the 4. And so 1 times 1, that's going to be 1. And then we have 1 times negative u squared, and then negative u squared times 1. And finally, negative u squared times negative u squared, which is positive u to the fourth. Now our next step is to combine like terms. Negative u squared minus u squared, that's going to be negative 2 u squared. Now let's delete this. And let's distribute the u to the fourth to everything inside the brackets. So u to the fourth times 1 will be the same thing. And then u to the fourth times negative 2u squared. 2 plus 4 is 6. And then 4 plus 4 is 8. Now let's use the power rule in the next step. So it's going to be u to the 5th over 5 minus 2, u to the 7 over 7 plus u to the 9 over 9. Now the last thing we need to do is replace u with sine x. So the final answer is going to be 1 over 5 sine to the 5th x minus 2 over 7 and then sine to the 7th x plus 1 over 9 sine to the 9th x plus c. And so that's it for this problem. By the way, for those of you who want more examples on integration by parts or trig integrals, feel free to check out my new playlist, my new calculus video playlist. And I'm going to post the link in the description section so you can take a look at that when you get a chance. But in this video, I'm just briefly going over the main integration techniques that you need to be familiar with in Calc 2, for those of you who are going to take it. Now, here's another problem for you. What is the integral of sine squared x dx? Try that one. Now, there's no point replacing sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. It won't help us. In this particular problem, we can't really use u substitution. So we have to do something different. And this is where you need to know your trig identities, particularly the half angle identity. You need to know that sine squared is 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2x. And so we could replace sine squared with that. Now we can move the 1 half to the front. And so we can rewrite the integral like this. Now, at this point, we can integrate the function. So the antiderivative of 1 dx is x, and the antiderivative of cosine is sine, but the antiderivative of cosine 2x is sine 2x, but divided by 2. And I'll explain why. But for now, let's finish this problem. So I'm going to distribute the 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half x minus, and then a half times another a half, that's a fourth, or 2 times 2 is 4. So this is going to be 1 fourth sine 2x plus c. And so this is the answer for this problem. Now for those of you who want to see why the integral of cosine 2x is 1 half sine 2x. You need to use u substitution. If you make u equal to 2x, du is going to be 2 times dx. Solving for dx, it's du divided by 2. And so what we're going to do is we're going to replace 2x with the u variable. And so this becomes cosine of u. And then let's replace dx with du over 2. Now let's move the 2 to the front. So it's 1 half integral of cosine u. Now the antiderivative of cosine is positive sine. And then the last thing we need to do is replace u with 2x. 
And so that gives us this answer, which is 1 half sine 2x plus c. So the antiderivative of cosine 2x, as you can see, is sine 2x divided by 2. Now let's try a problem with tangent and secant. So let's try this one. Let's find the antiderivative of tangent to the sixth power times secant raised to the fourth power. Now some things you want to keep in mind. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. And also, make sure you know this particular trig identity. 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So using that information, what is the antiderivative of tangent to the sixth power times secant to the fourth power? Now we need to make u equal to tangent so that du is going to be secant squared dx. If we made u equal to, let's say, secant x, du will be secant tangent. And that will make the situation a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So we're not going to do it that way. Now, we know that the secant squared will disappear, but we have secant to the fourth. So therefore, we need to get rid of a secant squared in order for this to work. So let's split up secant to the fourth power into secant squared times secant squared. So this portion, secant squared dx, we're going to replace it with du in time. But somehow, we need to get rid of this secant squared. Now, recall that we said that secant squared was 1 plus tan squared. So now it's a good time to use that particular identity. So let's replace secant squared with 1 plus tan squared. So now at this point, we can substitute. Everywhere we see a tangent, we're going to replace it with the u variable. And wherever we see uh, secant squared dx, which is only here once, we're going to replace that with du. So now we need to distribute u to the 6 to 1 and u squared. So this becomes the integral of u to the 6 plus u to the 8th times du. Now using the power rule, the antiderivative of u to the 6 is u to the 7 over 7. And for u to the 8, it's going to be u to the 9 over 9 plus c. So now let's replace the u variable with the tangent. And so the final answer is going to be 1 over 7 tangent to the 7th power of x plus 1 over 9 tan raised to the 9 power plus c. And that's it. So this is the antiderivative of tangent to the 6th power times secant to the 4th power. Now there's something called trigonometric substitution. Another integration technique that you're going to learn in Calc 2. And whenever you see an integration problem in this form, a squared minus x squared inside a square root symbol, you need to set x equal to a sine theta. And the reason for this is because 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. If you see this form, a squared plus x squared within a root symbol, your substitution will be this, x is equal to a tangent theta. And finally, if you see the square root of x squared minus a squared, you need to set x equal to a secant theta, because secant squared minus 1 is tan squared. So based on that, let's try a problem. Let's find the antiderivative of the square root of 4 minus x squared divided by x squared dx. So we can see that we have a problem in this form. And so 4 is equal to a squared. Therefore, a is equal to 2. Now, x has to be equal to a sine theta. So in this problem, x is 2 sine theta, which means that dx is going to be 2 times the derivative of sine, which is cosine 
theta and then d theta. Now x squared is going to be 2 sine theta squared, which is 4 sine squared theta. Now what we're going to do is we're going to replace x squared with 4 sine squared theta. And at the same time, we're going to replace dx with 2 cosine theta d theta. So now inside the square root, let's take out a 4. So if we factor out the GCF, we're going to have 1 minus sine squared on the inside. Now I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to erase everything on top. So just keep this in mind. x is equal to 2 sine theta. Now the square root of 4 is 2. So we can take out the 2 from the radical. And 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So this is what we now have. In the next step, we can take the square root of cosine squared. And so that's, I didn't want that to happen. That's going to be cosine. And so we're going to have 2 times cosine theta times another 2 cosine theta d theta over 4 sine squared theta. Now 2 times 2 on top is 4, which will cancel with the 4 on the bottom. And so we're left with cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared. And cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotangent squared. So what do you think we need to do at this point? What's our next, our next step here? Excuse me. Now recall that 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So therefore, 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. Moving the 1 to the other side, we can replace cotangent squared with cosecant squared minus 1. And so this is what we now have. The integral of cosecant squared theta minus 1 d theta. Now what is the antiderivative of cosecant squared? You need to know that the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And so the derivative of negative cotangent is positive cosecant squared. So the antiderivative of positive cosecant squared theta is negative cotangent theta. And the integral of negative 1 d theta is simply negative theta. So right now, we're getting close, but we don't have the answer quite yet. Even though we've integrated, or we found the antiderivative of this expression, we still need to replace theta with some x variable. As you can see, this is a very long problem. So let's go back to this expression, where x is 2 sine theta. Let's divide by 2. So sine theta is x over 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a right triangle. And let's do that a little bit better. And so here's theta. Now based on Sokotoa, we know that sine is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So x goes on the opposite side, 2 is the hypotenuse. Now, using the Pythagorean theorem, we need to find a missing side. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And let's say a is the missing side. That means b is equal to x. So b squared is x squared, c squared is 2 squared. So moving x squared to the other side, we'll get that a squared is 4 minus x squared. And taking the square root of both sides, we can see that the missing side is the square root of 4, minus x squared. So now we can figure out what tangent is. Based on Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's x over the square root 
of 4 minus x squared. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So cotangent is going to be square root 4 minus x squared over x. And we do have a negative sign. Now what about theta? What is theta equal to? Well, we saw that sine theta is x over 2. So theta has to be arc sine x over 2. And so we can replace this theta with that. So we have minus arc sine x over 2, and then plus the constant of integration. So this is the final answer. So that's an example of using trigonometric substitution to find the antiderivative of something. Now, because it's a long problem, I'm only going to do one example in this video. If you want more examples, check out my new calculus video playlist in the description section of this video, or you could subscribe to this channel and check out all the other video content that I have. Thanks again for watching.